Well, US President Joe Biden will make his final State of the Union address of this term later today. Mr Biden will have the opportunity to tout his accomplishments and to pitch his re-election campaign as he prepares for a rematch against Donald Trump in November. Well, speaking of Donald Trump, the former president will offer a live play-by-play rebuttal to Mr Biden's address. Joining us now for more on this is our Washington, D.C. correspondent, Simon Marks. Good morning. Simon, welcome to the program. Morning, Ingrid. Now, we are first uh, hearing some breaking news about what might be included in this uh, State of the Union speech. What is he expected to say? Absolutely. This news breaking just as morning report came on air. The White House says that President Biden will announce here tonight that he is directing the U.S. military to establish an emergency port on Gaza's Mediterranean coast. Uh, The construction of the port says the White House will not involve American boots on the ground in Gaza, but will involve the presence of U.S. military personnel on military vehicles offshore. It sounds like they're planning somehow to create this uh, emergency port offshore and then convey all the elements that it requires uh, to the Gaza shore itself. Uh, Administration officials say that this move is being taken uh, without uh, any weight for the Israelis. This is a moment for American leadership, said an American official. But once aid arrives at the port, the United States will coordinate with the Israelis regarding security requirements on land. Uh, All of this getting underway, they say, after the president makes the official uh, announcement tonight, and this port is designed to receive large ships carrying food, water, medicines, and temporary shelters. Now, we had wondered, uh, as we headed into this all-important State of the Union address for President Biden, just uh, precisely how he was going to talk about Gaza. Jeff Seintz, the White House Chief of Staff has indicated that the President will address Gaza in a very meaningful way. The White House Chief of Staff confirming that this speech is a particularly big moment for President Biden and he's promising the American public and the wider world that they will see tonight a President who will be very energised and certainly in broader political terms that is precisely the demeanour that President Biden uh, needs to adopt if he's going to use this speech not just to make uh, news there about Gaza but more broadly to turn his flagging political fortunes around. Yes well international relations has been a a vulnerability for him but also you're talking about the tone there and the energy of the speech. How much of it will also be not just what he says but how he says it, the, the stamina he can bring to that address? Well, I think a lot of it, Ingrid. I mean, there is absolutely no margin for error for President Biden tonight. And that's partly because of the stakes in the election, the latest polling showing Donald Trump five percentage points uh, ahead of him nationally and ahead of him in many of the battleground states, the all important swing states that will decide the outcome of this November's election. But it's also because of a number of unforced errors that President Biden has made over the last few weeks, including those moments when he has confused Angela Merkel with the late Helmut Kohl, when he's confused uh, Emmanuel Macron with the long-deceased Francois Mitterrand. I mean, there is simply no room for error tonight, given the massive audience that he's going to have, not just over broadcast television and radio, but also, of course, over all the streaming services, uh, with all sorts of people, including, it seems, former President Donald Trump, uh, reacting instantly uh, to any moment Uh, involving President Biden that has the potential to go viral. So there is no margin for error here. He's got to find a way of resetting his election campaign, explaining to the public in very clear terms what his achievements have been. His campaign aides uh, are hoping that there will be no more references to Bidenomics, which he's been talking about relentlessly without any impact on his depressed approval ratings. They want him to explain in cold hard terms what a reviving American economy means for the pocketbooks of voters who are going to make their big decisions uh, later this year as we hurtle towards November. You mentioned uh, President, uh, former President Trump there. How will his rebuttal work? Is that going to be on his <laughs> on his social media network or? 
Yeah, I mean, we don't know the answer to that. He has said over his social media network, Truth Social, I am pleased to inform you that we will be doing a live play-by-play of crooked Joe Biden's State of the Union address. I will correct, he says, in rapid response, any and, and all inaccurate statements that the president makes. He says particularly those pertaining uh, to immigration and what President, former President Trump refers to as the weaponization of the U.S. government by which he means the Department of Justice, the FBI, and uh, the judicial authorities that he insists are engaged not just in persecuting him, but are engaged in acts of election interference by advancing criminal cases uh, against him. But in what format this is going to play out, I mean, presumably over uh, Truth Social, uh, we are unclear, uh, but certainly this is an unusual posture for any former president to adopt on the night that uh, his successor, has uh, the nation's Klieg lights on him. But, of course, Donald Trump is not a normal former president because he's now very much the Republican standard bearer in this year's election after Nikki Haley dropped out uh, and abandoned her quest for the Republican nomination. That has totally left the way clear for Donald Trump to claim it. Yes, absolutely. Hey, thank you very much for your analysis uh, this morning uh, and what will be a very, very important speech for the uh, current U.S. President Joe Biden.